Hello everybody and welcome to Tech Uploaded, I'm Chris and today is a pretty exciting day because Intel has made Devil's Canyon official at Computex as well as the 20th anniversary edition of that Pentium chip that's going to be unlocked. That little dude's kind of a weird guy but he's going to be out there along with the Devil's Canyon chip so we have the 4790K and the 4690K coming on the scene very soon and I also wanted to address a question I've been getting quite a bit since I posted my last video on Z97 and that is should I go with Z97 now, or should I just wait until the fall and then take the plunge into X99 and DDR4 and Haswell E? So there's a lot of things to consider there, but I'm going to at least give my opinion on that one and what things you should consider to go one way or the other. But first, let's take a look at Devil's Canyon. All right, there's obviously lots of articles out there on this one, but this was the best one I found so far today, in my opinion. It's the fine folks over to Nantech actually put this together, and it's a pretty darn good rundown of all the details about these chips that are coming out. All of these articles will be linked below in the description, so if you want to read them in their entirety, that's where you can find the links to them. But here it is, Intel launches Devil's Canyon, an overclockable Pentium. So you've got the 4790K, the 4690K, and the G3258 rolls right off the tongue for the Pentium there. But anyway, you can see right here they said after what seems like an eon or two since the original announcement, Intel's Rene James officially launched New Devil's Canyon and Anniversary Edition Pentium. So that's pretty cool. So what is the deal here with these things? Let me pull up this here for you. You can see right here... Uh, you've got the 4790K coming in at a base clock of 4 gigahertz and a turbo boost up to 4.4. So that's actually one hell of a jump from the 3.5 gigahertz that you had on the 4770K and uh, is actually even a little bit of a boost from the just standard 4790K chip. So this is pretty cool. I mean, even a very mild overclock on this chip is going to take you to 4.2, 4.3 on your base clock. I mean, that's pretty exciting stuff right there. So that's, I think, what they're going for. They wanted to get that up as high as they could. Now you can see here, they went from the TDP being 84 watts to the TDP being 88 watts. So it is going to generate probably a little bit more heat because it's going to need a little more power to pull this off. Uh, it is going to use the same Intel HD 4600 graphics and the same memory, DDR3 1600 two channel. Obviously, that is very overclockable and it is on that 1150 socket. Now the 4690K same deal, uh, didn't get nearly as much of a bump in its base clock speed than the over the 4670K, which is an incredibly popular chip, and it does turbo up to 3.9. So, man, that 4790K is just a beast, come just right out of the box, even without any kind of an overclock on it, which is pretty cool. So you can see here, they actually show they've got the original, which I'm assuming is the 4770K, and then the new 4790K on the right. And it kind of gives a breakdown of what this is, looks like on the back and what kind of things they changed here. So you've got the new next generation polymer thermal interface material, NGP TIM, that works with existing cooling solutions. Improvements enabling cooler and higher performing CPUs. I don't know that that really read right to me. Maybe I'm just tired. New additional capacitors to smooth power delivery to the die on the chip. So that's pretty cool. Enhancements enable additional performance in headroom. Thanks, Intel. So now that brings us to the Pentium comparison. So all right, here is that 3258. Uh, you can see that it actually falls a little bit lower than their high-end Pentium at 3.2 on the base clock. However, it is unlocked, which has, we haven't seen this in a long time in Pentium chips. So that's interesting. Now the one thing to note though is the DDR memory is a DDR3-1333. So that may hold you back a little bit on your memory overclocks. It's, it's dropping the baseline a little bit on that. But the TDP is only 53 watts, and here's the big one, the price, 72 bucks. So going back and looking at the i7 and the i5, the good news there is that price pretty much stayed the same. Now obviously the 4770K and the 4670K were already marked down a little bit from this before, just because they've been out for a while. But you know, overall, that there's not really a price premium to pay for either one of these chips, which is nice. All right, so here's a breakdown of the robust overclocking features on the new unlocked 4th Gen Devil's Canyon chips. So you can see here in this graph, they're kind of showing you all the different things they did in order to be able to make this, you know, a better overclocking chip. So you can basically see here that they're saying that the base clock tuning ratios are now bringing an overclocking experience consistent with current high-end desktop platforms to the fourth gen Intel uh, core processors and, you know, in the mainstream. So I think kind of what they're going at there is they're pushing these things a little bit closer to the uh, Ivy Bridge E series chips that we know were known to overclock pretty well. So this should improve your ability to achieve uh, a high core graphics and memory frequency overclock by independently raising your clock speeds uh, without impacting other system components. So that's pretty darn cool. 
Now, I wasn't real sure about what the release dates were going to be on these. If you read this article, it does state that uh, it was going to be sometime in June. And if you look over on Newegg, actually, that seems to be consistent. Newegg is showing the release date here as being June 25th if you do a pre-order. Uh, and that does apply to both the 4790K and the 4690K. So, uh, and you can see they're, they're priced very competitively there on Newegg. So uh, I believe Micro Center uh, here in the US is also doing a pre-order. And if you actually go in the store, I think they're having this thing priced at like 279 for the 4790K, but it's in store only. So if you don't have a Micro Center nearby, you're kind of hosed. But anyway, you can pre-order them now. So if you want one, I guess get on that. But here's the other interesting news. WCCF Tech reported that uh, basically you should be able to use these Devil's Canyon chips on Z87 motherboards. Now this is interesting because Intel, when they first announced this back in March, someone in, in the audience actually asked during the presentation, will you be able to use Devil's Canyon on 8 series on the Z87? And the answer at that time was no. You'd have to have a 9 series chip that you have to have Z97. And it looks like the motherboard manufacturers were kind of like, nah, we can go ahead and make it work. So. This actually broke yesterday, and I'm not sure if more motherboard manufacturers have been added, but if you scroll down here, uh, Asus was the first one to start releasing some BIOS updates that actually support these new chips. And I would imagine that they're going to be rolling these out as time goes by. So I would think, you know, if you've got a Z87, you know, Pro or higher, you've got one of the, uh, you know, Republic of Gamers boards, I, I would think a lot of motherboard manufacturers are going to work to try to get this in here. So you got the Devil's Canyon key channel dates here. Uh, so yeah, hopefully we'll, by the time these things hit, we'll be seeing motherboard manufacturers for people Z87 updating their BIOS so that you will be able to use these chips, which is awesome. So it's good to see that, you know, motherboard manufacturers are stepping up and saying, you know what, it's fine. We're going to go ahead and give you that capability to run these chips. We're not going to make Z87 just a one chip platform. We're not going to make it just Haswell. We're going to give you Devil's Canyon. And I think that's great. And that definitely makes the Z87 platform uh, continue to be viable because in, it looks like Broadwell is not happening until 2015 now, at least in the desktop space. So it's nice to see that we've got this nice long run here for Devil's Canyon and it's not going to be restricted to just Z97 motherboards. Then there was a little bit of news here on X99 that happened during all this as well. Uh, it looks like MSI showed off a prototype and uh, this was the... Guru of 3D posted this on their site here, and you can see here, world's first DDR4X99 motherboard. This kind of popped up, I think, because as I'll show in a minute here, DDR4 was also on the scene at Computex, and they're showing all the different features here. It's military class four. Uh, so there's lots of stuff going on here. You can see the product specs up on the screen, but it's, it looks like here, this is what's interesting. You've got eight DIMMs of dual channel DDR4 uh, 2666 overclock, uh, and you can do up to 64 gigabytes on that. You've got four PCIe 3.0 X16. You've got M.2 10 gigabit per second. You got SATA Express, and then you got eight SATA 6. And what's really cool is you've got 12 USB 3.0 and six USB 2.0. So there's no shortage of USB on this thing. And then Intel, uh, you got that uh, I218V uh, gigabit LAN. It's really good to see that motherboard manufacturers are standardizing Intel NICs now. I think that's a nice step in the right direction. Uh, it used to be that unless you got the higher end boards, you didn't get that. Obviously, an X99 board is a high end board, but we're seeing the Intel NICs appear on pretty much every Z97 board that there is, not just the higher end ones. So it's good to see it's continuing over to X99. And here's a good look at the board itself. Um, you know, and if you didn't like gold, MSI's got you covered here. We're, we're back in the, in the black blue colors there, so that's always good. And then as far as DDR4 is concerned, one of the big things that I've been uh, having a lot of people ask me has been, what is the price going to be for DDR4? Is this stuff going to be astronomically expensive? And for quite a while, it's like, I don't know, probably. Well, it looks like that is finally answered. WCCF Tech put an article up on this as well. Uh, Corsair did announce the DDR4 Dominator Platinum in value select memory. So you can see one of those sticks right there. Look at these things. Let me see if this will pull up. There it is. So boom, DDR4 right there. It looks uh, looks a little bit different on the slot there. So that's that's interesting. I mean, it's memory. Come on. But here's what's interesting. So pricing, Let's see if I can make this bigger. So you see here, uh, it looks like they're expecting a premium on this stuff until late 2015. But if you look at this chart, um, you know, first quarter, which is already over, we're over here in quarter two now, we're looking at what, like uh, mid 80s, you know, 80 to 85 bucks here for DDR4, where it's got us, you know, sub 70, and this is for eight gigabytes. By the time that we have X99 on the scene, we're gonna be sitting right about here between third and fourth quarter. So we're looking about, I'm gonna say anywhere between probably 70 and $80 for an eight gigabyte stick. 
Now, that could be a little bit of an issue because it's if it's anything like uh, it was with X79, you're going to need four of these bad boys. So, if you know, you can go up to 32 gigs, so that's cool with just adding four of those sticks, but uh, if they don't have four gigabyte sticks available, which I would hope they would, then you're going to be in a pretty good premium here because even though the pricing is not terrible, if you look on here uh, between quarter three and quarter four, I mean, like I said, you're at about 75 bucks. That's not a huge bump up from where you are in DDR3 at that point, but when you're talking about buying four of these sticks at one time, that's when things get a little bit on the pricey side. So that kind of segues into the question I've been getting quite a bit, and that is, okay, I'm gonna upgrade, I've got, you know, let's say, I've got a Sandy Bridge, or I've got, you know, a standard like i7-920, classic i7. Should I upgrade, or, you know, I'm running an old AMD, you know, Athlon or Sempron or something like that, should I upgrade now or should I wait? So the thing with that is, it, you kind of have to ask yourself, how important is it going to be for you to have the additional cores and the additional memory bandwidth that DDR4 is gonna bring? So essentially what that means is, are you going to be doing heavy computational things? Really heavy video editing, like talking 4K all day long. Uh, are you gonna be doing 3D rendering? Are you gonna be doing building information modeling or 3D rendering artwork like that? I mean, you know, are you gonna be doing any of that kind of stuff? Because if you are, having those additional cores is gonna be nice. Uh, a few people have commented Star Citizen. You know, we've got some games out there, especially that one. That's like the flagship game, no pun intended, that's going to come out and just eat every single bit of computing power, it sounds like, that your computer can hand off to it. So if that's really important to you, then you may want to consider that. But the thing is, is there's still not a great deal of things out there that are taking advantage of this many cores. So you really want to make sure that you need it because you're going to be paying a pretty steep premium to do this. I would say that we're looking at pricing on X99 being in the ballpark of where it is on X79 for the motherboards at least. So you're looking at probably three to 500 bucks for a good board, um, you know, depending on which one you get. That's, that's where we're at now roughly, I think it's like 250 to 500. And then you've got that DDR4 memory and that's gonna be your biggest cost. I can't, you know, judging by how Devil's Canyon went, I don't think we're gonna see the processors go crazy on price, at least for the six core. Now the eight core may be rather pricey. So take into consideration that you're gonna look at, you know, probably let's say, let's just say 500 for the CPU. And then you're gonna look at another 400 for the motherboard, so you're at 900. And then you're looking at here on the memory, if you go with four sticks of that DDR4 eight gig, you're now at another 300, so you're at what, like 1,200-ish? Whereas with Ego Z97, you're looking at under 400 for your CPU, and you're looking at under 200 for the motherboard. So let's even take it on the high, let's say like 350 and 200, so you're at, you know, all right, 550 plus, let's say another 100 memory, you're at 650. So you're at about half of the cost to go with a 4790K setup then you would be going with an X99, whatever that chip is gonna be, the 5,000 whatever K. So that's why I think it's really important to consider, all right, is this really gonna be important? Do you really need this much speed? If you do, then wait a few more months until the fall hits and you know, know that you're gonna go into it at about a 12 to $1,300 expense to get everything you need. However, when you do this, you're gonna be future-proofing yourself as much as I hate to use that word, um, but you are to some extent because looking at the lifespan that X79 had, I think if you get into X99 early, you're going to be on that platform for quite a while. So if you're somebody that doesn't like to upgrade a lot, that's not a bad option to go with because you're getting in at the beginning of a socket, you're getting in at the beginning of a chipset, you're getting in at the beginning of a memory architecture. Now that is a little bit scary because none of this stuff has really been tested before. It's new memory. So you got away the, the pros and cons. But just know, you know, you're going to be spending about double of what you would on Z97 to go X99, or at least that's my guess. Of course, these are all my opinions, but, and you know what, if you've already got a Z87 board, check your BIOS. You may have a motherboard update that's going to allow you to run these Devil Canyon, Devil's Canyon chips anyway, so maybe you're running a 4670K and you want to step up to a 4790K. That's going to be a nice bump in performance for you. Uh, you know, but again, it's easy to get wrapped up in all these chips. It's easy to get wrapped up in all the new technology. If you've got a decent processor still and you're not seeing the best performance that you want out of your games, really take a hard look at your GPU because updating your GPU is gonna get you way more bang for your buck as far as performance in games goes than upgrading your motherboard and your processor and things like that. So 
just be intelligent about what you want to upgrade on your system. But obviously, there's lots of good options out there right now. So Devil's Canyon's here. X99 is coming. Broadwell's looking like it's not going to happen until 2015. And then it's looking like it's not going to be actually that far off from Sky Lakes. So that's going to be interesting how close those two end up falling together. And by the time we see the 100 series, probably the Z107, it would be my guess. Those are going to be DDR4 as well. But by the time that hits, going back and looking at our DDR4 pricing chart, let's say we're somewhere between quarter two and quarter three. We're going to be roughly this time-ish next year probably when we have Broadwell really fully on the scene and available. And we're starting to think, all right, Sky Lakes coming any minute now. DDR3 and DDR4 are kind of coming to an equilibrium at that point in price. So that's something to consider as well. Um, if you're still running hardware that's running really great and you're not having any problems with it, just cool your jets. Don't get wrapped up in all the hype. Just wait. And 2015 is going to bring a lot of really exciting stuff too. And it's going to bring much more affordable DDR4 memory. So lots of, lots of news today. Lots to go over. But I wanted to get that out there because uh, it's pretty exciting stuff. Been waiting a while to have these Devil's Canyon chips hit. So there it is. If you found this video helpful, please go ahead and click on that subscribe button. You can also follow me on Twitter over at Tech Uploaded. I've already pre-ordered a 4790K and a 20th anniversary Pentium chip. So as soon as I get those, it'll be fun to experiment with the overclocking on those, compare them to my 4770K, see what kind of temps we get, what kind of overclocks we can get, test them both out on a Z97 workstation board from Asus and just kind of see if these things live up to all of the hype that's been built up around them in the coming months. Thanks for watching. Don't be a stranger. Check back soon.